Greetings, and welcome to a Fireside Chat with Zany Mystic. I'm your host, Lance White. Today, my guest is Graham Hancock. Graham is the best-selling author of The Sign and the Seal, Fingerprint of the Gods, Fingerprints of the Gods, and Heaven's Mirror. He teamed up with Robert Boval to write The Message of the Sphinx, and is a frequent traveler to all the sacred sites around the world, researching the truth about our history. His books have sold more than 5 million copies worldwide and have been translated into 27 languages. His latest book is a novel titled Entangled, which we'll be talking about today. He recently participated in the groundbreaking film directed by Ekan Deravi, entitled Earth Pilgrims. We may also touch upon his book Supernatural, which is an account of the ancient teachers of mankind and the use of natural substances to cross into other realms. So, let's welcome Graham to the show now. Hi, Graham. How are you? Hi. Good to be with you. <laughs> well, you know, I have to tell you before we get started that uh, I I couldn't stop reading Entangled. I literally couldn't put it down. I'm it's really glad turner. to. I'm really glad to hear that. Then it means I've done my job well as a novelist. Oh, absolutely. I, you know. And the characters are so beautifully drawn, and uh, one of, of course they're all good characters. But I especially appreciate a Doctor Bannister uh, yes. for personal reasons, uh, yes. and uh, the themes that you get into are really cosmic themes, and they're relevant today because it's the battle of good and evil. Yes, the the book is uh, the book is all about uh, the battle of good against evil. And it's played out in two different time frames, uh, which nevertheless uh, interconnect because I take, I would say, a very quantum physics view of time uh, in this novel, that time is not an arrow. It's not a kind of straight line with cause and effect only moving in one direction, but that rather it's a series of cycles and spirals that intersect and cut across one another and knotted segments of time that are bearing influence upon one another. So the two principal characters are, are both young women. They're the heroes of this story. Uh, Rhea in the Stone Age uh, is uh, a, a human being like, like you and I, and anatomically modern human beings, because an anatomically modern human beings uh, did uh, live on the planet uh, 24,000 years ago. Uh, in the Stone Age, uh, mm -hmm. but the other the other principal Stone Age character is a young Neanderthal man uh, called uh, Brindle, and the, the Neanderthals are are our uh, cousins, and they became extinct uh, mysteriously uh, 24,000 years ago. And the book opens with uh, Rhea uh, rescuing Brindle from an attack by members of her own clan because they called the Neanderthals the Uglies, and they mm -hmm hate them and despise them, uh, and Rhea rescues him and uh, goes with him to, uh, to his people. Uh, and, and while this is happening, um, a, a, an extraordinary invasion of their lands is taking place from another human people called the Illimani, uh, who are led by a demon, uh, a, d a demonic force who has taken a human body, and his name is Sulpa. And his mission is to wipe out all goodness from the world. And in this novel, I don't conceive of the Neanderthals as knuckle-dragging ape men. I conceive of them as full of beauty and truth and goodness. And they're, they're a, a kind of light for the world. They're, they're gentle and loving and compassionate. They communicate uh, telepathically. And the reason that the demon wants to mislead human beings into destroying them is that he gains a psychic charge by doing that, uh, a sufficient psychic charge to manifest fully in the 21st century, in our time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and if he can do that, then he will be in a position to weave the doom of all mankind forever. All our potential will be destroyed. Uh, everything will be lost. When the story opens, he's not yet fully in physical form in the modern age. Um, he's more like a dark cloud or an influence that influences and misdirects and misleads people. But if he succeeds in 
bringing about the extermination of the Neanderthals in the Stone Age, then he'll be able to jump forward across time and take a body in the 21st century, and that will really be the end of us. So stopping him killing off the Neanderthals in the Stone Age is the essential jeopardy of the story, and this is the role of the the young uh, heroine Rhea uh, in the Stone Age. And her sister in time, as I refer to her, is a young woman in modern Los Angeles, 21st century Los Angeles, named uh, Leone. And she has already been uh, a victim of this uh, demonic influence in the 21st century because her parents are members of the cult of this demon. He's called Jack in the 21st century. And uh, she's been subjected to horrific abuse uh, during her childhood, which she's largely been persuaded to forget about. Mm -hmm. uh, but in a near-death experience that she undergoes at the beginning of the story, uh, she has an encounter with an angelic uh, and good supernatural being, who I call the Blue Angel, who reveals to her the truth about herself and sets her on her mission to join forces with Rhea across the barrier of time uh, to defeat this demon and uh, make sure that he does not bring about the end of the world. Yes, yes, well, <laughs> um, I, all of this is, you know, very uh, resonant because I can see parallels to our own time today. Oh, yeah. And uh, obviously, you meant it to be that way. Um, very much so. Very, very yeah, much so. Yes. And I, because those I, I things absolutely... are really going on. Yeah, they are. We live in dark times, and 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 demonic forces are at work, and and humanity yes. is being, humanity today is being misled, and and our faculties are being closed down. There's such extensive uh, mind control in yes. our societies, um, such yes. a dominance of individual consciousness uh, that, I, that, that, that I, do, I do believe that mo most people go through their lives really quite unaware uh, of, what is being, of what is being done to them. Absolutely. Um, and just to, to branch off on the side uh, from this, uh, I've been doing a lot of travel around the United States uh, in the last uh, month and uh, a lot of flying from airport to airport. Uh -huh. um, and, and it's very clear to me, both in the U.S. and uh, and in Britain, that we are doing a terrible trade of uh, liberty for security, um, and a and a horrendous uh, habit of obedience is being inculcated uh, into us. I'm thinking of this uh, these so-called naked body scanners in airports, yes. Yes. Uh, where people where people with although we have the option to opt out. 99% uh, of passengers just queue up without question and have their body blasted with uh, x-rays. Um, and, and, and I discovered that if you do opt out, uh, a, a directive seems to have been given to security staff in all airports uh, to make the opt-out process uh, extremely painful and unpleasant. So the physical search that they, they shout, opt out, opt out, and guards gather around you, and they yeah. do a very uh, almost abusive, uh, rape-like uh, physical search, very humiliating and in, and in public with a lot of bracing of rubber gloves and angry looks. And, and I can see that what they're doing there is they're making the human right to opt out so uncomfortable and so unpleasant that the few of us who do choose to opt out will eventually opt in. And in this way, uh, creating uh, an absolute habit uh, of obedience to yes. uh, government controls. And, and I yes. think that a habit of obedience is not what we need in the world today. We need free and responsible, independent adults who are capable of making up their own minds about things. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. And I, I read an account of that opt-out process, and I couldn't help but think that this is what they're doing uh, on every level uh, that we can conceive of as far as uh, growing your own food they're they're working on laws to uh, not allow you to do that yeah. uh cut, cutting back on organic farmery, farming so that it's uh, eventually uh, blocked um, yeah. it just goes on and on the can it goes on and on the, consider these mass vaccination campaigns oh, and, and again geez. how uh, quite regardless of the of the issue of how dangerous these vaccinations can be what what i see even worse is again that we're being put into an automatic habit of obedience to state authority yes. and yes, simply absolutely. saying yes and, 
And to my mind, this goes completely against the American way. It's against everything that the Founding Fathers stood for. Uh, and, yes. You know, and, and when I look at this happening to a beautiful, wonderful country like the United States, which has been a beacon of freedom and liberty in the world for so long, it makes me very sad. And I, and I can't help feeling that something has gone terribly, terribly wrong. Yes. Yes, I agree with you. And it does seem that there are larger forces at play that are basically closing the noose, uh, and they're working at it uh, <laughs> overtime at this point. And I, I wonder if that might have something to do with the, with the uh, 2012 material that we are all familiar with and the closing of so many cycles. It seems that they're trying to um, basically... We're, we were born as slaves. We were, we've always been indentured, uh, indentured as slaves, mm -hmm. all of us. Mm -hmm. But we've been allowed to at least think that we weren't slaves. But yes. now they're actually getting us to the point where they're taking the final step and closing the gap, and we will know that we are slaves, and then we yes. will be microchipped, told what to do, and there won't be any option to, uh, as you said, opt out. Because they'll make uh, and it this so then, painful. This then is the end of all human potential, all all Absolutely. creativity, all imagination, all individuality uh, will be will be crushed uh, by by this by this process. And and worst of all, this this automatic habit of obedience uh, yes, and of saying yes. yes. Now now when the authorities are relatively benign, you know that uh, may not result in horrendous consequences. But twenty or thirty years down the down the line. We don't know what kind of governments we're going to have, and if we're all if we're all ground down into a complete habit of obedience, we'll say yes to anything. Yes, and I think it's a, I really think it's it a right terrifying now. prospect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. It's already happening. It's already happening yeah. now, and and um, and I do see. I've always felt uh, that the fundamental uh, a fundamental dynamic of the universe uh, is the struggle of good against evil, and that's why uh, entangled. Is all about that, uh, and that, and that in this struggle, the the special position of the human being uh, is the right, the ability to make choices. Uh, un, un, unlike other uh, animals with whom we share this planet, uh, mm. our consciousness has evolved to a stage where we we can actually make very fundamental choices, and by sending us to sleep by encouraging us in the habit of obedience, by denying us our responsibility as adults, by devolving all responsibility onto the state, we are not able to choose uh, anymore. Mm -hmm. And, if, and mm -hmm. if we're not able to choose, we can't grow, and mm -hmm. we can't learn, and we can't develop. And, and I actually do see a, a dark force behind that, uh, which yes. wants to deny us our potential. Yes, I do too. And, and many of my guests see the same force, and many of the listeners yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's, well, this uh, is my, this is the great hope, and I, and and this is the other side of the story in America, um, and and here I see more hope for America than Britain, because in Britain we for a long time had the habit of saying yes to authority uh, mm -hmm. without question, but in America there still is this strong spirit of independence. Uh, I wouldn't uh, I, w I wouldn't say that it's uh, throughout the entire population. Uh, but I would say that there are enough people in America who feel strongly about their independence and their right to responsible decisions uh, as adults and who are able to take initiatives at a local level uh, that something still might be might be done about this, mm -hmm. about this horrendous process that's uh, that's taking place. It's a very big country. There's, what, 300 million people here. And, yes. uh, and, and, and amongst those people, there, there perhaps are enough who are who are free thinkers and independent minded uh, to keep the fire of uh, independence burning yes and of consciousness and, and of awareness. consciousness exactly. because it seems our consciousness is being eroded daily by this constant pursuit of materialism and you know uh, fragmentation into a unity consciousness uh, yes. not unity consciousness but individual consciousness where each person is being sold to and uh, we're consumers, and uh, everywhere you look, we're bombarded with uh, <laughs> rays and radiation and harp and frequencies that we mm -hmm. aren't even aware of, let alone uh, the ones that we are are aware of on television. And, and even those have subliminal uh, uh, messages in them. Exactly. So, and, and indeed, we're bombarded with 24-hour-a-day uh, reality TV. 
uh, oh, yes, which, is, yes. which is turning our brains to mush. Yes, uh, yes you know, yes. this is uh, again eroding uh, eroding freedom of choice. Uh, I would never Absolutely. have imagined, that, you know, that we would come to this pass. Uh, 